If you open your programs to page 21, you will see the novel about uh, Doug Bastriano. <laughs> I'm sorry. You tell I'm still in talk show mode from this morning. No, actually, uh, you know, when I, when I read that, and I'm not going to stand here and read all this to you this afternoon. I figure you all can read. You're not Democrats, and uh, you don't need pictures. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, or liberals, for that matter. But uh, anyway, uh, when, I, when I read this about uh, Senator Mastriano, uh, it's kind of interesting because what I walk away with is the guy can't keep a job. I mean, you look at, <laughs> you look at this and you see he's, uh, he's worked as a janitor, a security guard, short order cook, pizza delivery man, and dishwasher. That was just during COVID. So. Um, <laughs> Uh, he was commissioned in the United States Army at one point in time. He later on became a Navy man, so I don't know who he roots for in the big game each year. Um, after 9-11, he was the lead planner for the operation to evade Iraq and Turkey. We thank him for his service there, do we not? All of us. Yep. <laughs> then he was director of NATO's Joint Intelligence Center in Afghanistan. He uh, is a doctor of history. A uh, PhD has four master's degree. My God, I have one. I, this guy would need time to sleep. Uh, strategic, strategic uh, intelligence, military operations, and air power. He earned a BA from Eastern University in St. David's, Pennsylvania, and was the alumnus of the year in 2009, of course, right? Um, most importantly, he's a senator right now, in all seriousness, who stands up for liberty, who stands up for democracy, and who stands up for people having the right to live with liberty and freedom. Ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor to welcome uh, State Senator Doug Mastriano, please. Wow. <laughs> God is good. Oh, yeah. It is great, Pastor. Good to see you. Where's Rebby? Ah, there's, hey, there's my wife. Give it up for her. <laughs> Go, Rebby. <laughs> You guys know the story, right? When I won the special election two years ago, summoned into Harrisburg for an interrogation. How much money did you raise? Who was your consultant? Who was your campaign manager? Uh, and they were very disapproving. I'm like, oh, it was Rebby. And then they looked at her with furred eyebrows and, well, what are your qualifications? And she goes, I'm an army wife. They're like, huh? <laughs> what does that mean? But military spouses knows the deal. But wasn't yesterday a great day in Pennsylvania, huh? Oh, yeah. Wow. You did it. We did it together. It was a long fight. It took a lot longer than we all had imagined, but wow. And uh, I was, I'm looking through Facebook memories, and I was like, well, hey, on 10 June 2019, I was sworn in. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I have a fan. Rachel, what's up? And Bonnie, too. Oh, I saw oh, Teresa. Oh, man. Lebanon County's here. Oh. <laughs> those, those people are street fighters. Don't mess with Lebanon. <laughs> And then uh, 10 June 2020, we passed 836 to reopen the state. It was a, you know, that was a fantastic thing. And I love 836 about freedom. And John 836 says, right, if Jesus sets you free, you're free indeed. And wow, that was a great day. But then the governor came out this day last year, most animated I've ever seen him, very petulant. How dare the General Assembly take away my power? I'm like, wait a second, we have a constitution. You might want to read it. I don't think he has. He keeps on saying we're a democracy. No, we're a con And to the democracy for which it stands. No, it's actually a republic. But what a great year. A team was forged together. We did this together as a team. And uh, one of the leaders of that movement is Matt Bellis right there. If you give it up to him, reopen. Man, oh man. Okay, there's the clock. I'm like, I don't want to talk too long. <laughs> we came together here, and it, it was a dark time. You know, that's why we started the fireside chats last year. Anyone tune into those last year? A couple of you, maybe. That was all, they obviously inspired by FDR, but it was all as a result of so much confusion and doubt. I'm just trying to tell you the latest I knew from Afghanistan. Felt like, from Harrisburg. Felt like Afghanistan sometimes. But it was a great day. We they moved yesterday, three years in a row, significant events in all of our lives, or well, at least mine anyway. But what a crazy time it was last year. You know, Wolf was missing in action. He came out on the 6th of March, gave his speech about the emergency order shutdown. And then on 18 March, he came out and, uh, you know, all hands on deck. Two weeks, I promise you, to flatten the curve. You know, 444 days later, I'm like, you know, that's a long flatten the curve. And then he, then he disappeared. 
And I started looking for him on the milk cartons. I actually found the milk carton here. <laughs> Have you seen this man? Wow. Also missing Levine and Fetterman. Wow, okay. <laughs> I really was worried about him. I was going to call the hotline, you know, for endangered and missing people. I was like, I hope he's okay. And then, of course, you know, I think he was hiding in the basement with Biden. What do you think? Maybe? Came out with that sunburn on his bald head. I, I could relate. That, that is painful stuff. I keep telling Rebby I'm going to buy a wig one of these days, and she's like, yeah, I'll leave you if you do that, but okay, maybe not. But he came out this time last year, uh, you know, showed up in Philadelphia, kind of like Elvis, you know, made an appearance. Elvis is in the house. Wolf is in Philly. Yeah, you know, it's kind of like a, kind of a nightmarish kind of time, because any time he'd come out, he kind of like Puxatani Phil, right? Saw my shadow six more weeks of COVID. I'm like, no, Governor Wolf, stay away. Stay in that hole with Biden. At least he's safe, doesn't have hair, right? See, could you imagine? Anyway, I'd probably be safe too. No, maybe not. But, uh, you know, where was he? You know, he did the 55 visits of Where is Wolf and uh, not at his office. Everything shut down so much for all hands on deck. That's for everybody else. And, uh, well, came out this time last year and he's in his infinite condescension to the commoners and people of Pennsylvania, the king doth proclaimeth that certain counties, including Dauphin County, shall move to yellow phase. This happened a year ago. Remember that? And uh, thou shalt gather in groups of 25 and under, but if thou hast come with 26 or more, he shall perish and be smitten down by COVID. And I'm like, wow, well, well, at least we can come together in groups of 25. And then, you know, lo and behold, the king himself could not even abide by his own edict for 24 hours. He shows up in Harrisburg at a rally, you know, a state-sanctioned, state-approved rally. You know, that's a beautiful thing about COVID. You know, when Matt or myself had our rallies, you know, the media came out, there was very few masks. There were, so, there were super spreaders, no social distancing, very irresponsible or reckless people. But when Wolf comes together and he's marching with casts of thousands, since it's approved by the state, you know, oh, no, it's okay. It, there was no problem. COVID shall pass over them. I'm like, really? Didn't even take the blood of a lamb to do that, and that's amazing. <laughs> I'm like, come on. Come on, man. Really? <laughs> that's the only interesting thing. You see Biden yesterday in England? He's kind of like, and Jill's like, hey, Joe, pay attention. <laughs> I'm like, well, Vladimir Putin's afraid. <laughs> Very afraid. <laughs> oh, man. Strange times. But, uh, you know, he gathers in a rally in the media. I wish they'd give us a free pass. Oh, do you think that was inconsistent, Governor Wolf? And he's like, oh, it may have appeared to be so. No, no kidding, it was. You're a hypocrite. The rules apply to everybody, not just to those of you that you approve of. And, uh, you know, the media came down hard on us. And guess what? You know, the conspiracy theorists were all on the other side. We were right last year, right? The much the, the Lord Fauci has now been proven to be a false god. His emails came out. We shall not bow at that altar. But all the names, I wanna, I wanna, I'd like to have an apology from the media. Right? Matt, you going to get one, brother? You probably won't get I ain't, ain't going to apologize. They're, they're going to move on. And uh, even in all that troubles in Philadelphia last year, remember that? About 100,000 people came out to protest. It was looting. People calling my office for help, despair, because their own senators and reps weren't, weren't answering the phones. And uh, even one magazine came out in Philly. We did research on all those who came out and looted and rioted together and protested together, and not one case of COVID was spread. I'm like, well, how is that even possible? I thought it was the deadliest contagion in American history kind of thing. It's a really strange thing. You think about last year, what we've been through. You know, the most dangerous place uh, in, in the world, according to Governor Wolf, is not Afghanistan, Kunar province, Helmand province province or Kandahar, it's the lobby of the restaurant, right? Okay, if, you don't, if you're not careful out there, people, if you don't stay home, stay calm and stay safe, COVID's going to get you. He, he said that kind of stuff. I'm like, well, is this really fear-mongering? You know, so, uh, you know, you give a safety brief in the lobby of the restaurant. Okay, Rebby, we had to get our masks on because we got to make that mad dash at the table because COVID, instead of elf on the shelf, COVID on the shelf, there, there's Mastrietto. Oh, he's got a mask on rats. But I will get him when he goes to the bathroom because I know he'll forget that mask and leave it behind. I'm like, really? I'm just, you can't make this stuff up. So much for follow the science, right? These same people are lecturing us about how to take care of ourselves with these science-denying techniques. Thought it would be a good idea to take the sick, elderly, from the hospitals and put them back into the homes. And 13,500 have died as a result of that failed science-denying policy. These people that cloaked themselves in self-righteousness, like modern-day Pharisees here, had denied 150 years of germ theory by Louis Pasteur going back to 1870. And it was catastrophic. Could you imagine a Republican administration getting away with that? They would not. And such a Secretary of Health would not be promoted to the second most powerful position in the United States. 
But you, don't, you know, the double standard and hypocrisy, we're done with it. And so when they come at us with their self-righteous indignation, you know, we saw Mastriano in Phoenix. He's a danger to the Republic. It's like, oh, shut up. Stop. Yeah. You think last year, too, the speeches and lectures we had to get from uh, old Pelosi. How's Nancy doing? You know, shut down all the hair salons in the state here. Our governor did also. She, you know, she had her own state in California. But, of course, we see her on video running around there with her hair done. I'm a little jealous. Wish I had that problem. But uh, be that as it may, you know, and uh, there she is. But no one else can get it done, only the elites. And, you know, but one of my friends told me, Doug, you need to go easy on Nancy because she really thought it was a saloon, not a salon. I don't know. What do you think? I don't, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> Yep, I was happy today actually, because you know when I when I'm driving up 81 coming up here, I, I always I always tend to look at the cars that I'm going by, and you know usually I do see the young man in the car alone with a mask. I didn't see one today, but you know the story. You know you're passing the dude, he's alone in the car, and it's like you want to start beeping the horn. Hey, roll down your window. It's okay. It's your own air. If you have COVID, it's too late. It's just just lighten up, Francis. So Arizona, what's all the fuss? I, I'm invited by our ca counterparts in Arizona to look at their forensic audit. And the CNN, it's not a fraud. I don't know how you can cons consider yourselves honest journalists if you're going to label things you don't like you know, with hyperbole. It's a fraud. It. Well, I, I, how do they know? Seven ca uh, sorry, eight cameras 24-7 watching the entire arena and all the storage areas there. It's, it's science-based. There's multiple eyes. Normally, recounts have two counters. And down there, they have three counters. I mean, it is absolutely superb. And 47% uh, of us in this state here have serious out, uh, doubts about the outcome of the election. For, even CNN agree. They said 46%. I guess close enough for CNN. But uh, with that many people uh, having concern about an outcome, we have no choice in Pennsylvania but to do a forensic audit. A forensic audit. We do. It was funny that, you know, Governor Wolf came out of wherever he's been hiding. I guess he's Biden's over in England, so they can't be in the basement together. You know, and all these things about Senator Mastriano, I'm like, oh, come on, brother. Can I, should we really take you? And, you know, and how about Josh Shapiro, our esteemed uh, attorney general? He's going to have to go through me to do an audit. <laughs> what? <laughs> Seriously, dude, come on. Chill out, man. Or do you have something to hide? Hmm. If you really cared about the people of Pennsylvania and almost half of the state's population have serious doubts and concerns, as I do, they're not, they have not have been answered, and coming out with your flat statements with your cronies in CNN, it was a perfect election, like that's ever happened, especially Philadelphia. You know, uh, when we had 22,000 dead that were, were not removed from the books until just a couple months ago, when they were ordered to remove it before the election, huh, nothing to see here. Still have 120,000 unaccounted for excess voters. Nothing to see here. Ballot curing, mostly in Democrat uh, counties, um, and all the shenanigans that would happen with the Act 77 and the Pennsylvania Supreme Court rewriting election law. And it's, uh, it's unfortunate that our, uh, the U.S. Supreme Court has not heard these cases. They threw them all out on technicalities, but they're going to have to deal with it in the end because there's a lot of unanswered questions. So any governor, regardless of party, any attorney general, regardless of position, should be all in. We got nothing to hide, especially with a governor that said, I'm going to be Mr. Transparency, the most transparent governor in Pennsylvania history. It's like when you hear politicians say that, it's like opposite day, he's going to be the least, and he's been proven to be so. So here we go. It needs to happen. It, needs to ha it can't be a recount because, you know, garbage in, garbage out. It has to be a scientific audit forensically where we look at the circles as they're doing in Arizona magnetically with magnifying glasses. You can see if it's copied or hand filled in. Obviously, the copy will be set aside as, as questionable ballots because they weren't filled in by a human. So we, let's just do it. Let's get it done. Obviously, I have a series of, uh, yes. Time flies when you're having fun. Maybe not. Some of you look like you're sleeping. Out. Oh, man. Okay, I better wrap it up here. <laughs> we have legislation. I'm working together with several senators here. I'm going to lay out a few things here. Senator Judy Ward and, and Senator Pat Stefano and myself are working on it. lots of pieces of legislation. They, they've been introduced. One, of course, is the repeal Act 77. That's simply because it was compromised by our Secretary of State and, uh, and uh, as well as the Pennsylvania Supreme Court. Also, we're looking at uh, voter ID, and we're, we want to do not, both legislation and referendum. Yes. 
So refer okay, yeah, so the governor's going to veto that. Aha, uh -huh. but a lesson from last year was we'll then do a ballot question. And I think any issue of the uh, how our election is conducted in Pennsylvania should be your decision in the end. So we have referendums laid out there for voter ID, repeal of 77, and, and many other issues here to tighten up our elections. Obviously, we need those moved out of committee. The last thought here, there's too much to talk about here, but we got through this endeavor last year because we stuck together. We had common cause with Matt leading the reopen movement, and then we followed the freedom movement here. That first day, we all stood in the steps together, a small group of us calling for Levine's resignation, myself and a couple hundred of you came out. I see a few of you that joined me, that's where we first met. We had common cause, but right now, we're fracturing. We, we're in campaign season here. People want your votes, so they're lying about my record and other people's records. And anytime a Republican, when, they're, when their stitch is going after other Republicans here, I'd say turn your back on them. They are toxic and dangerous to our country. The Democrats, I do admire them because they stick together. Meanwhile, we're out here, and notice how quiet they are. But we, we have knives sticking in each other's backs. That's got to stop. I, we're not going to save our state and country unless we just put the knives away. You might not like every vote. You might not like every decision. You might not like the color of my hair or lack thereof. But, but I think we can put aside our differences. As Benjamin Franklin said in 1776 down in Philadelphia, either we'll hang together or we'll hang separately. We've got to hang together, brothers and sisters. We've got to do it. We got enough here in common. The job's not done. We had a great victory yesterday thanks to so much perseverance and prayer and hard work. The job's not done yet. Now, here we are going into campaign season. Rebbe and I are still praying about that big decision. But here's the deal. Last year, politically, it was a lonely fight. It, we weren't alone because we had many of you with us, but it was a lonely fight. And you don't know how insulting it is to us who've been in this fight from the beginning for how these politicians crawl out of their, their foxholes after the fighting's over, and I will fight for you, listening to these mind-numbing speeches coming out of their minds when they didn't lift a finger to help us last year. So I would say choose wisely. When you're listening to these politicians with their slick words and their fancy ads, just ask the question, where were they last year when you needed them? Where were they when you needed them to reopen the state? Where were they when you needed them to push out Levine? Where were they when our, our elderly were dying? Where were they, were in this, were, did they even come to Gettysburg to the hearing or did they, they snub that and suddenly they're interested because they want your vote? So uh, talk is cheap. I'm gonna wrap up with this. As King Lear says in Shakespeare, may their long words their deeds approve. As my dad would say, walk your talk. So together, we're going to take back our state. Thank you, and God bless you guys.